Well, my name is Eduardo Silva. Today we have this quick presentation called Connecting with Prometheus World, Logs and Metrics. I know most of you uh, might be lucky enough that you are not messing it up with logs, right? But we are, I'm coming from the, from the logging space, and I think we, can, we are kind of the small cousin on this e ecosystem. And as, far, as part as the community, we have seen a lot of requirements on how people, how users, companies can have a more unified experience, right? Between logs and metrics. But not just from the data analysis perspective when it hits the backend, but before that, in the right side, or also in the left side from the pipeline, where the data collection happens. Uh, my name is Eduardo Silva. I'm the creator of this project called Fluembed, one of the maintainers. Also, I founded this company called Calyptia, which is the first mile observability company. We founded this with Anra Gupta, which is Fluentd product manager, and have been the CNCF uh, for a while. I used to be at Treasure Data with the whole uh, team that created Fluentd. Okay, before talking about all this uh, unification process and this story, uh, we need to talk about uh, about how logging works, right? Maybe you are familiar with it, but it's really good always to make some analogy in how things interact. Basically, in logging, you have one application that ships one message. That message can be sent to the standard output, some kind of a stream can hit uh, the file system, and most of the time, it's just a raw text message, right? But when you have this message and you want to do data analysis, you will notice that there's some difference compared to metrics, right? Here, we don't have a, a fixed schema. Most of the time, we don't have a structure. Even if it's in JSON, it's just an array of bytes, right? But we need to do some computing in order to handle those messages uh, properly. And when the application generates more messages, even if you're in the container space, right, this will be trapped by the container engine, and they are going to group them in a file, in a JSON file that you will end up consuming for your own purposes. And this is the fun part, right? For example, most of the time you just hit the file system and you need some kind of engine that take these files or listen for these messages over the network, start processing them, enrich them, drop some of them that doesn't match some criteria to be able then to send this data out to your own backend because you just care about data analysis. But if you want to do data analysis, you have to collect the data, process it, and send it out. In all this process, which can be summarized as like an input and output, there's a couple of things happening, right? So if we are reading files, we have to deal with log rotation files, copy truncate, we have to deal with the file was rotated, keep in monitoring for a couple of seconds, then make sure that you close all the file descriptors and everything works smoothly, right? Now, when you're trying to send the data out, you have to make, things happens, right? Network outage, power outage, a bunch of things. And some services, even on-prem, sometimes uh, don't get um, very responsive enough. The normal is that we have more data from applications, and the problem is that backend application storage engines are hard to scale, unless you're using a hosted uh, solution. But the, con the concept here is that we create this project, FluentD and FluentBit, to solve this problem, how to collect data from multiple sources of information and how to send this out to any kind of backend database, right? Thinking that this is the kind of the, the right vendor neutral way uh, to work in the login space. And FluentBit and FluentD are used widely, right? Most of this traction uh, started to grow when uh, AWS, Microsoft, and Google started using it in their own infrastructure. Nowadays, just from public repos, FluentD and FluentBit are deployed more than two million times a day. Just from the public repos, we don't have any stats from the private, but it should be 10x more. Okay, so now logs and metrics. Let's talk about this unified uh, experience. And we have seen that in the market, there are different kind of tools to try to accomplish this, right? There's some kind of fatigue in terms of people having multiple agents for different things. And here, we're not trying to propose something to replace everything, 
from the fluent perspective as a project, we always uh, think and have this mindset that we should listen messages, data or anything from every source and be able to send that data to any destination, even if that is a competitor, right? Avoid the vendor lock-in. So that unified experience is what users want. And for years, they, they told us, hey, well, is your agent able to handle metrics too? And yeah, we kind of do it, right, on our own way. Is the proper way? Mm, maybe not. But also from a maintenance perspective, yeah, we have some experience with metrics, so why we cannot try experimenting and creating a solution that works with both scenarios, logs and metrics? So now it's a quick intro about our journey of these years into the metrics world and the kind of value that we're trying to bring uh, connected with, connecting with the Prometheus ecosystem. As I said before, a uh, Fluent Bit project specifically, since the beginning, I'm talking about five, six years ago, we always had this metrics collector. Fluent Bit was created originally for embedded Linux. So we created CPU collector, memory collector, but all those metrics were handled as logs. Right, what that means? No scheme, fixed schema, just a simple structure. In our world, we, use, uh, we don't use JSON. When we consume the data, we use message pack, which is like a kind of binary version, but there's no enforcement of a fixed structure. So if you have a couple of key value pairs, that's fine. And for example, if I want to gather CPU metrics, right, I just gather them, but again, them as JSON logs, not as a metric payload. So, and that's will support the network thermal, Docker metrics, and fluent bit metrics, of course. Now, if you will compare both, there are some uh, in terms of two spaces, logs and metrics. From one side, logs will have as unstructured and structured messages, right? In metrics, you always has a fixed data model, which is, uh, give us a lot of happiness, at least for the logging world, right? We have a lot of pain because when we don't have that structure. From the other side, in logs, uh, users care about filtering, data reduction, data enrichment, Kubernetes metadata or any kind of things, and be able also to do aggregation, take all the data, buffer the data, process it, and then send it out. In metrics, I would say from the collection standpoint, aggregation is quite uh, optional. In logs, we don't have a predictable size for the data. Right? We can get as much as data as we want. If one of the developers uh, got a lucky day and just enabled debugging in their application and just went home, on Monday we're going to figure out that we're going to have millions of extra messages but that we didn't need it and we started paying for them on our Splunk database or another one. So it's hard to predict, right? It's hard to control. In metrics, yeah, it's a fixed data model. You can predict at a certain point. And well, in logs we have map, booleans, integer floats, pretty much like a JSON. And in metrics, of course, we have more defined times, counter gauges, histograms, and I think that for our use case um, is quite, uh, quite good. Now, when we're thinking about how to, how to bring value from a fluent perspective to the metrics space, we went, wanted to think, so what we need to, what, what do we want to improve in the market? Do we want to rewrite everything from scratch? Right? Do we want to implement our own data model on top of what the market is using? And from our mindset, the answer is no. We did our research, and I think that uh, personally, if you want to start adding value to the users, to the companies, you have to integrate with the standards that you have in the market and not reinvent the wheel. And if you're going to reinvent the wheel, at least make it compatible with what you have in the market, right? So we decided to stick with Prometheus and open metrics. We say the whole industry is using Prometheus. If you're going to be a good citizen with Prometheus, we have to use the same protocols, the same style of metrics. There's years of experience. So why not to keep, why not to keep on that? And for us, Prometheus ecosystem is quite interesting because you have a metric spec, you have these con notions collectors, exporters, and also you can ship the metrics over the network. 
with usually that is a problem, right? If you don't have the right data serialization format, shipping data over the network might generate some issues. And this is how, from a Fluent Bit perspective, we say, okay, we're going to integrate with Prometheus. But that what means, right? Because I'm not planning to ship logs from Fluent Bit to Prometheus, but I care more about what kind of um, enhancement we can do in the ecosystem. So before to write any integration and everything, we decided, hey, we have all our stack to manage logs, but also we're missing this piece to manage metrics in Fluentbit. Fluentbit is written in C language. So it's not like we can just can go ahead and consume all your, your Golang SDKs, right? It will be a tremendous overhead for the project, for our perspective. So we started this project called Symmetrics with Apache license, pretty much the same thing. And we started like it's written in C, we started to support basic stuff, counter, gauges, and type it. Yeah, we need it. And histograms are currently under development. We had to make it labels aware. It must support atomic operation. And actually, uh, I can say, yeah, it's pretty much a copy of Prometheus Go client. Yeah, we took a look at it. Yeah, we need atomic operations, we need labels. And if you're going to start doing metrics stuff, we should take the best practices from Prometheus. So the Symmetrics project itself is about, we care about the content, not the transport. The moment that you separate both concepts, you can get a lot of advantage. For example, for a flu fluent bed project that aims to be vendor neutral, that aims to handle metrics, okay, we are going to be a good citizen with Prometheus, right? But what about some user says, hey, I'm using InfluxDB or I, I'm using an endpoint, I'm using Chronosphere when M3, I need remote write. So how do we play with all these different kind of payloads, connectivities, and security things? So we say, okay, so symmetrics will be all about how do I create metrics, how do I manage its value, and how I can take this metrics context and convert it back to any kind of payload that I want. So we extract the whole problem. And also we care about, okay, let's support the same thing that Prometheus, names and subsystem, name descriptions for help, and labels. Yeah, maybe some things will go away with uh, open metrics changes, but that's fine. Now, let's take a some simple C example. Right? Uh, what we're doing here is just creating a simple context of C metrics, gathering what is the current time step, creating metrics with two labels, Right, increment the counter, and optionally just getting the value, right? I'm not doing anything fancy here. This is just a definition, incrementing a content, retrieving the value, and printing that value to the standard uh, output. Now, another thing that we can do here is like, for example, with if we are using InfluxDB, we can use this simple API to encode my context to an InfluxDB payload. Right? And we're going to that specific output. So this is the way that we work in Fluentbit. So no, we try to be, have an agnostic core that we take data, we, we unify in one format and convert to the other. Symmetrics does the same thing. We did the same thing for Prometheus Spotter. Right? I have a symmetrics context and I want to expose this information. But this, this is the difference. Do you remember that I said we don't care about the transport, we just care about the content. Here we are not uh, using any kind of HTTP protocol of anything. It's just payload, just content. Also, we can do remote write. This was a quite more uh, extended work, but we could accomplish using the same Prometheus uh, protocol buffer files, so with the same specs, we are now able, able to generate this kind of uh, Prometheus remote write payloads. Okay, and now we get back to Fluent Bit. So we now we have a, line, a small library that handle metrics that convert payloads. And now, okay, now we jump into the metrics part. Sorry, in the network metrics part. How do we use it? And the first project, which might be a bit controversial here, is like our users ask it, 
to re-implement Node Exporter, but in Fluembit. And what means re-implement? Users have usually had Fluembit for logging, and they have Node Exporter for metrics. So they ask it that Fluembit, since it has a pluggable architecture, if we can re-implement the same metrics collection inside Fluembit to avoid having an extra agent, right? This is not just about just compete one project with the other. It's about just to add a more flexibility to the users who want to have this kind of unified uh, experience. Of course, Node Exported has a lot of, a uh, hundred of collectors or more. We try to focus just on a subset for this year, like CPU, CPU frequency, just for Linux, Nets, Netstat, uh, Uname, VMstat, blah, blah, blah. And uh, actually, we got a really good reception, but that is the collection side. So we got Fluembit. With Eximetrics, we create an input plugin that's gathered all this information from the PROC file system. And now it's time to do something with it. We get the data and the input. Now we have to expose that information somehow. So using the same engine that we showed some few slides ago, now we can use our own built-in HTTP server and expose the payload of this symmetric context in our HTTP server. But here's a difference. When you have a, an exporter, most of the time the data, when you get the request, it's just a gatherer real time. On that moment, you get the data, right? Here in Fluentbit, we use a different approach. It's like the input plugins runs at its own interval of time, scrapping metrics, scrapping information, pushing that to the output side, and in the output, for example, the HTTP output plugin, we have this kind of cache. That is refreshed one every two seconds. So every time that we get a client that's going to scrape these metrics, like Prometheus, it's just going to get the data not on demand, but the last data that was generated by the input plugin. And from a Fluentbit configuration perspective, this is just a few lines. You just write, you can have multiple inputs, filters, and outputs. We just say in the input, just use not export the metrics plugin, right? Associate a tag to it, scrape interval to two seconds. And in the output side, use the Prometheus exporter output plugin, right? And you can just get the information without any problem. Sadly, I will have to skip the demo because you know we got this Linux problem today, so I cannot, I don't have the environment to, me, to show you the demo. But hopefully, uh, maybe we can start, we can, or we'll try to post something online so you can watch it how it works. Now, as a summary of uh, in our metrics journey, what is supported today inside Fluentbit? It's not exported metrics for Linux. Uh, our Fluentbit internal metrics now are supported using BIC metrics. And in the output side, we can send metrics to InfluxDB, Prometheus Exporter, Prometheus Remote Write, so as a kind of supported outputs, and forward. Forward is a FluentD and Fluentbit protocol to send data over the network. So if you have another remote uh, Fluentbit instance that speaks forward, it's able also to receive those metrics and reassemble all the context, met the context metrics there. And then you can do whatever you want, right? Ranges, add labels, or modify the data. Now, what is the current ongoing work? And I never expect this when we started this metrics project, is that people started asking for node exporter metrics for Windows. And this is crazy, right? <laughs> you always think that everybody's running Linux, but when you go to the market, everybody's using Windows too, Windows Server, of course. So we are writing Windows exporter metrics. We are rewriting Nginx metrics exporter as an input plugin for Fluentbit. Uh, we, we, we already support collect D and stat Z, but as logs, now we are implementing those to support as native metrics receivers. So you can have your own um, nodes that are sending stat Z or collect D metrics and just receive them in Fluentbit, convert it to message metrics automatically and expose them in Prometheus exporter or just send it out over do you prefer back in using remote write? Another work that is ongoing right now is the ability to convert logs to metrics. 
Now you may think, okay, when is this needed, right? Well, pretty much, for example, if you're reading a, I don't know, N Nginx logs, and you want to count the number of 200 responses that you're getting or trap the 500 ones, you will be able to create this kind of metrics based the parsing of the log and generating these updated values. And right now we are working to have native metrics support in the output side for Datadog, uh, Splunk, and Cl Amazon CloudWatch. In FluentBit, we also, is not, we started as just operate to take data from one side, send it to the other, but we added many things in the middle, like filters, Kubernetes support, but also we added a stream processor in it. We wrote our own SQL parser, and you can run your own SQL queries on top of your data that is flowing through memory. There's no database, no indexing. Kind of a stream processing, processing is very similar to KSQL. Now, that allows us to do fancy things like for all the data that matches a pattern, take it, create a new stream, and send it out to a different destination. Now, the same thing we're going to do with metrics, right? We want to do, create this kind of metric processor that allows us to take the metrics and do some fancy processing, aggregate them, or do whatever we want, and maybe ship this data to a different processing, different endpoint. And this will open the opportunity also to create alerting or any kind of other um, implementations. Now, the common question is the future, open metrics, open telemetry, and as I said at the beginning, uh, as a project, we are trying to be vendor agnostic and spec agnostic, but we try to implement right away with what the industry is using. Now it's Prometheus and open metrics. Once open telemetry gets GA in metrics, uh, which I think will be soon, and well, looks is a few years away, we are going to integrate also with open telemetry for environments that the application is shipping native metrics in open telemetry format. So that is the current status of the project. Um, I'm glad to have the opportunity to share this here. And I would like to know if you have uh, any questions. Oh, thank you. If you don't like logging, that's fine because it's boring. I like Maybe logging. A... Big logging fan over here. <laughs> Thanks. Um, are you exposing uh, fluent bit metrics that it generates it telemetry about itself via C metrics? Yeah. Awesome. So now you can ship fluent bit metrics to a remote write endpoint or send it to, um, I don't know, InfluxDB. Yeah. Hey, Eduardo, thanks for the talk. Um, super interesting. And I, I was just wondering if you had any plans for uh, basically creating some way to extract metrics from the actual logs, uh, like user logs flowing through FluentD um, itself as it's collecting application logs from, from end user uh, systems. Um, and, and kind of your thoughts there and what, what's going to go on in that world. Let, let, let me check if I get the question right. Is if we are planning to get extract metrics from logs? Yeah, yeah, I was super interested to see. Um, so, you know, having support for plugins like Node Exporter and the FluentB internals, and also like other collections, like you mentioned StatsD and CollectD. Um, and I was just wondering if there was any likelihood that there would be development um, around saying, I have logs that tell me every time like I have an error, um, so like the error log rate um, and, and, you know, exporting that uh, as a counter or something like that as a metric. Um, uh, so just kind of those kind of use cases. Yeah, actually, that's one of the ongoing work. Yeah, it's a similar example that I did with uh, NGINX logs, right? When you want to count, I don't know, the 200 errors, error rate and all of that. 
And uh, that's one the collection standpoint, but also we want to do this kind of metrics processor that can help us to take some action based on results. So the answer is yes, yeah. Oh, awesome. All right, thank you very much. Okay, thank you everybody.